Welcome back to the Student of the Game podcast. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. Please hit that like and subscribe button. It's free of charge. So welcome back to another episode of our 31 Nights of Horror. Okay, so our next movie we're going to check out is, well, our, our next movie that we're going to talk about is 30 Days of Night. This movie came out in like 2007-ish. Okay, now I'm going to tell you something. Prior to this movie, for me, the best vampire movie was Lost Boys. Okay. After watching this movie here, this movie here, it's, just, it's like The Lost Boys and 30 Days of Night go hand to hand to me. I mean, this right here, this concept of this whole movie, it makes it seem like it could potentially be very realistic because it takes place in Alaska. And I forgot the name of the town in Alaska, but it's literally 30 days of night. 30 days of night. That's paradise. That's a dream come true if you're a vampire. And that's how the vampires in this movie treat it. They, they literally say it. This is a paradise. This is like a heaven for them. And what happens is, after they feast on the people in that town, okay, they cause, they end up destroying the town. Okay, well, that was their plan. Sorry, spoiler alert. So that way, there's no other trace for them. And then next year, when the next 30 days of night come, they'll go to the next town and to the next, to the next. You know, so that way, hey, you know what? The world will not figure out that their nightmares are real. OK, because if you're a vampire, I mean, you hit them with the element of surprise, because if the humans, if the human race finds out about you, oh, they're going to figure out a way to get you and they're going to make your job very, very difficult. But if they stay in the realm of being just a nightmare to human beings. But then guess what? Yeah, humans not going to dedicate enough resources to try to destroy them. But this movie here, man, Josh Harden and Melissa George, I love their chemistry in this movie. This movie here, I'm going to tell you something. This is, they are a couple on the brink of breaking up or they are already separated. And Melissa George's character, she's on her way to leave, but she ended up missing her flight because she got into an accident. She already has her place set up somewhere that's not in Alaska. All right. They're about to, they're about to break up. But what happens is, like, these vampires come, and, you know, Melissa George, her and Josh Hornet, they're the, she's the deputy and he's the sheriff, okay? Or she's the co-sheriff or whatever, something like that. They're the law in this town. And... They come together like whatever their differences was like they don't they don't quite tell you exactly what they broke up for. But whatever their differences was, they come together. All right. And the thing about it is one of those things is like if you're a counselor and you're doing couples therapy, this is a movie that you will want your couples to watch because it shows what happened when each person can put aside their his or her differences and come together and defeat a common enemy. All right. And like this, it was amazing how they had each other's back, you know, I mean, and, and some people are like, well, as human beings, th th that's a given. No, that's not a given. That's not a given. You know, they looked out for each other. I mean, and the, the chemistry was amazing. Josh Hornet, man, like I really wish we could have had a chance to see him as Batman. Maybe he's going to be Dr. Doom. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping he is. But anyways, I'm like, he was awesome in this movie. And I'm going to tell you something. Like the vampires in this movie, oh, they were phenomenal. There's a scene in this movie where his man and his and his wife, they're in the kitchen. Well, she's in the kitchen and he's like in the living room. Then boom, something comes, breaks through the glass, through the window. And then all of a sudden the vampire pulls her out. And the husband, he's chasing her. He's chasing, trying to get his wife. And the vampire, he's sliding her up under the houses, different houses, because their house is set up kind of high. And he kept trying to get to get to her, but the vampire kept scratching him. Vampire thought he was going to give up. Man, boom. Kept scratching him, scratching him. And then it gets to the point where he grabs his wife, but he wasn't able to, to pull her in because the other vampires was pulling that vi vampire who was pulling his wife. And I'm like, oh, man. That, that's a sad scene because he went after his wife. He just wasn't physically able to match the strength of a vampire. And what happened was he ends up turning, but... Josh Hornet's character, his name is Eben, he ends up killing him. And in this movie here, it's a lot of real life scenarios to where when you're watching this movie, you're going to question yourself. You're going to be like, well, man, I would do that. 
Because there's a cause cause who wouldn't go after their wife or their loved one? There's a scene where the man, his dad, who had dementia, who had Al Alzheimer's, one of them, he went out there. He snuck out the bathroom and went out there. And uh, Melissa George character was saying, no, don't go follow him. He's dead. And he was like, man, that's my father. I got to go get him. He went to go look for his father. He got killed. You know, and it's one of those things. I mean, if one of your loved ones is out there, you're going to go save him. I mean, but these were some very, very smart vampires. And they said, do not turn them. Do not turn them. Do not, because they didn't want the humans to be turned. Because what happens is, in the end, Evan, which is um, Josh Hornet's character. Oh, man, the way he went. Oh, well, let me tell you. Sorry, spoiler warning, people. Okay, we spoiling stuff. This came out in 2007 now. One of his friends who had turned, he took a... He had killed them, and he took a, a needle, took a syringe, and he injected the blood in him so he could go save his wife who was stuck out there up under a car, and she had no way to get to where, to get to the safe place because of all the vampires was over there. He goes out there, he injects himself with the serum, and he goes out there and, you know, he pretty much becomes a, a vampire, and... He takes on the head vampire, you know, but he was prepared to fight all of them. He takes on the head, the boss vampire, and guess what? He kicked, man, I thought he beat the crap out of him, man. Like the whole scene when the vampire flew and he, boom, stuck his fist in the dude's throat. That was savage. And then he was like, what? Who else wants some? You want some? You want some? You want some? You want some? You can get it. You can get it. He ain't say all that, but the look said that. You know, picture tells a thousand words. Well, a certain look tells a billion words. But we only need to focus on one word, on one phrase, which is, who wants some? And none of them, they didn't want any. They didn't want any. They backed off. And, you know, he ends up dying at the end because, you know, hey, um, daylight came, unfortunately. I thought he was going to be like a daywalker, like Blade or something. But, man, that was sad. But that was sad. It took that for him and his wife to get back together and share a good loving moment. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of those things, hey, man, don't allow a vampire apocalypse to come to your life in order for you and your spouse or you and that certain loved one to make up, to make amends. You know what I'm saying? Some situations you can't make amends for, fine. But if you know there's still love there, Man, extend that olive branch. Accept one another, you know. On a side note, a lot of people not, are not aware of this, but I have this theory going on where Josh Hornet's character in Halloween H2O is the origin story of the character in 30 Days of Night. What happened was is that, hey, after his uncle, Michael Myers, who came to try to murder him, all right, um... After him and his mom, Lori Strode, they defeated Michael Myers temporarily. He got the hell up out of there. Well, and his mom sent him somewhere else. They sent him in the universe of the faculty, where, if you remember in the faculty, Josh Hornet character, the teacher kept saying, oh, you're going to call your parents? Do you even know where they are? He doesn't know where his parents is. You know, he didn't know who his father was or where his father whereabouts in Halloween H2O. And... You know, Lori, if you watch the Halloween 2018, they said Lori had two failed marriages. OK, two failed marriages. They didn't mention who she was previously married to. But guess what? They also didn't mention her two kids, Jamie um, Lloyd and John. Which is Josh Hornet. OK, so in the faculty, guess what? He defeated aliens in the faculty. So this dude here, guess what? After defeating Michael Myers, after defeating aliens, shape-shifting aliens in the faculty, dude just said, hey, man, I'm going to move to Alaska to get away from all this nonsense. Get to Alaska. Everything is cool. Get married and everything. Him and his wife going through a breakup. Freaking vampires come. How can it get worse? So that's why he had no problem going out there and beating the crap out of the boss vampire. Dude, you defeated Michael Myers and you defeated the doggone aliens in the faculty. And then he died after defeating the vampire, sacrificed his life. I mean, Lori Strode, unfortunately, didn't know how her son's life ended. Um, but I don't know, know if she even really cared. 
mean, she didn't care to see, go see Jamie Lloyd, so who knows? But um, yeah. So now what's going to happen is Josh Hornet, he's going to be Dr. Doom in the MCU. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but maybe I'm not. But anyways, share your thoughts in the comment section and let me know what do you think about 30 Days of Night. Is it one of your top vampire movies of all time? Where does it rank? Is it one of your top three, top five, or is it number one? All right. Share your thoughts in the comment section. And hit that like and subscribe button. Student of the Game Podcast, 31 days, 31 nights of horror. Thank you for tuning in. Peace.